Today we're learning all about PHP GET and POST requests that will help our application send and receive data. Hello and welcome. My name is Dave. I'm a full-time developer and university web development instructor, and my goal is to help you learn how to build the web. If you'd like to see more of that, click the subscribe button you see right over there. Let's get started. We start out needing to start our JAMP local server. I've got the JAMP control panel open, and we just need to start Apache to run PHP on a local dev server. If you don't already have JAMP installed, I'll put a link in the description uh, to JAMP and how to install that. I already have a tutorial for that. Okay, we'll minimize the control panel with Apache now running so we can run PHP code. Notice in the file tree, I have an index.php already created, and that's the file here. So I'm going to minimize the file tree so we can get a little bit better look at this. Basically, this is an HTML page with a form. Inside the form, I do have just a little bit of PHP already. I have in the form action attribute, a PHP server variable, which is a special variable, and it can have several different values that this server variable can call, and I'm calling PHP self. Uh, this value essentially refers to the relative address of the page in the directory. So let's go ahead and I'll look at DevTools over here. I'm going to right click and choose Inspect, and we'll see the elements of the page. I'll open up the body. Here's the form. Notice the action attribute points to the relative address in my local server directory. So I've got slash and then 04 underscore git underscore post. There's a slash over here, index.php. You can't quite see it all, but let me go ahead and expand this so you can. I'll drag this over a little more. There we go. So 04 git post slash index.php and that is the relative address on the local server. I'll put this back and close DevTools. Let's look a little bit more at this form. Also, this form has a method attribute that is git, so that sets the default request attribute, or the form method, as it's also referred to. And if we just push the regular submit button, that's what it will use, is the git request method. It will send a git request. However, if we choose submit using post, it will use post because I've added the attribute to the button here, form method equals post, and that overrides the method that's set in the actual form element. So this button will submit using post. So we can send get and post requests with this form. And using this server variable means we're really going to submit the form to itself. So we will use the server, but it will send data right back to this very form. So we'll be able to grab that data as well. Okay, I'm going to make the web page bigger just so we can see the address up here because that's what we'll need to see. And let's look at the difference between a git and a post request. First, we'll use git. I'll just put my name in here. And when I submit the form, notice we get parameters in the URL. It starts with a question mark. And then we get first equals Dave, and then an ampersand, last equals gray. Those are the parameters. Now, I will make this window back, and I don't know why it didn't extend all the way down, but there it is. And now let's look at how we did that in the form as well. You have to have the name attribute for your input. That is the first, where we saw first equals Dave. So you want to have a name attribute. It is not the ID. The ID is also essential though because when you have your label, my label says first name here, the for attribute of the label needs to match the ID of the input element. But the name attribute is the one that you will see in the URL with a parameter. And so we put a name for first there and a name attribute for last in the second input and that passes those parameters. Now when would you use a GET request versus a POST request. Well, in general, when you're getting data from the server, you would use a GET request, and when you're posting data to the server, you would use a POST, but that's just in general. Of course, if you have any secure or sensitive information, you would not want to use a GET because the data you send is visible 
in the URL bar. And so you do not want to submit anything with a GET request that would be sensitive. Post, however, does not put it in the URL. So now let's take a look at that. And I'll just put in another name like Tom Petty. And once again, extend this out so we can see what we get here. I'll submit using post. No parameters up here. Now, we're not doing anything with the data we received back, but notice there are no parameters. The post request did work. So now, I don't know why that's not extending down, but once again, pull it down. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the data that we're receiving from the form. The data is received in an array, so we can come up to the very top of our page and start some PHP code, and we'll put an ending PHP tag as well, and now we can just say print underscore R, and now we can refer to the array that we will receive. So let's receive some get data, we'll save that, and once again, I'll put my name in fields and we'll submit using the first button, which is a get request. And now look at the top of the page. We're just printing the array directly to the page. You can see first equals Dave, last equals Gray. And this is an array in PHP. Now let's do the same thing for posts. And I'll just leave both in and we'll see what we get. Well, Tom Petty with the uh, opposite caps here. Here we go, Tom Petty. And now we'll submit a post. We've got an empty array first. That was the git right here because we submitted post data. But now the post array has printed as well. We can also pull variables or values and assign them to variables actually out of the array. So let's look at that. We'll say first name and I'll set that equal to and now I can refer to the there we go get and first value that comes in the array and I'll do the same with the last name And then we can echo those to the screen as well. So I'll say echo first name and echo last name. Notice we're not putting line breaks, so it will probably come one right after the other. But let's try it out. Put my name back in there again. And we'll submit a git. And yes, so the first array has data in it. And now the second array that prints to the screen is empty, the second array being the post. And then we assigned the first name and last name variables from the data in the get array. And then we echoed those to the screen. And you see Dave Gray, no spaces. We didn't bother with anything like that or any concatenation at that point. Now we could of course do this the same with post as well. We do have to be cautious when we're receiving data and printing it or sending it directly to a web page just because cross-site scripting attacks do exist and that you might see that as XSS for cross-site scripting and that is when maybe JavaScript code could be injected into our page just through these variables that could be printed right back to the page and we don't want that to happen. So let's look at a couple of ways to filter that input that comes in and then we can make sure it is sanitized and safe for our pages. The first special function is very easy to remember because it is called HTML special cares for characters. And you wrap the variable or what you are putting, if you could actually without a variable, you could just take say this get first and put it right in here. Let's get rid of that extra dollar sign and it should still work. So if we said uh, Neil Young and submit that with a git, we still have Neil Young here, even though it worked. But this has sanitized 
this uh, data from special characters that are in HTML and otherwise that could possibly be harmful to the page. So that is one easy way to remember because the name is very much uh, saying what it does. But there is also another way to do this with a filter. I'll remove these two areas here now and we'll work with these lines above for a moment to install the filter. So the very first thing we have to type is the function and that is filter underscore input. And after we do that, we wanna say input underscore get because we're receiving get data. And then we'll say what is the variable name and that is just first or the parameter name I should say. And then the filter that we want to apply. So we don't really need that to get it out because we're telling it it's get data and we're telling it the name of the parameter. What we have now is filter sanitize and then we expect string data so we can just say string and several of these filters exist that you can look at in the PHP documentation which I can link to below. And now we'll do the same thing for the last. So I'll just copy this In here I'll put last, and this is also a string. Say if this was a number, for example, we would filter, sanitize, and then it refers to uh, integer, but it's just int. And like I said, several of those filters exist, but I'll come back and put this as a string. And this sanitizes the input when it comes in as well. And then we can once again just echo or put it inside something in our page and I'll just do the first name this time put Dave here and submit and it's up here on this line it didn't wrap around now because it's not long there are no line breaks in our output right now but I've got Dave over here but it is sanitized now we can add the last name here even though it may not be submitted and it is still not a problem for PHP at this point using these filters for the input. So I'll once again submit just my first name. We have the same output and there's no mention of the last name. There's no error either. There's no problem. We can even go into the URL and omit the last parameter completely. And I pressed enter. And once again, no problem. So that is one thing that leads me to like the filter input method over the next method that I'm going to show you, but I want to have both available. One other thing to note on this method, if you're relying on this data, if you want to make sure the last name is there before you try to echo it to the screen or insert it into some HTML somewhere, you need to have an if statement and you can say if not the logical operator not if not empty which is a function and then we could put first name and then we could put the and the two ampersands and then once again do that for the last name we could just make sure both values are there before we try to use them on the page and then I'll go ahead and put these echo statements inside and then we could have an else and then we could say uh, echo and missing required data let's go ahead and put a period there okay save that and now if I just sent the uh, first name we submit we get missing required data likewise the same will happen if I just send the last name and we once again get missing required data. But if we submit everything that we're supposed to, it should go through just fine. And yes, we do. So this is the way that I prefer to do this. Now let me show you another way that also works. So I could just comment this out. And in Visual Studio Code, by the way, I press Shift, Alt, and the letter A to comment out a block of code like that quickly all at once. Again, Shift, Alt, and the letter A all together. I am on Windows. It may be different on Mac or Linux. 
Okay, the other way we can do this is to grab data directly out of the array, and you uh, saw an example of this earlier, but I'll start typing it out. So I'll just say if, and we're going to use the isSet function, and this checks to see if anything is null or not, or if a variable is set. And in this case, we need the get array uh, parameter to be set. And that would be for first. And then we can, of course, use the and and do the same thing for uh, last. And now we are checking to see if either one of those are null or actually if those parameters exist is essentially what this is checking to make sure we're receiving both parameters that we expect. Now if they exist, now we can set a variable. If not, we would get an error. If we tried to set a variable equal to a parameter that did not exist, this would cause an error. So now we type those parameters out. I'll just copy this and do a little editing. Hopefully it's faster than I can just type it all. And here as well. So there we have our first and last variable set. And now that we've done this, now we need to go to the next step that we essentially did up here already. And that is to have this if statement to see if they're empty or if we're missing anything. So after we would take this initial step, then we would paste this in just like we previously already did here. So the filters take this is set portion out of the equation for us because they already kind of take care of that. And then we just have to check to see if they're empty or not. Now down here, we could have an else for the is set and we could say um, not set and save that. So this is a little bit longer, but when we go to echo these, remember these still haven't been sanitized. So not only does the filter take care of the is set portion of this solution, the filter also takes care of this HTML special cares function. It, does, it has a similar function. They're not identical. Uh, and of course you can drill into more information on the exact differences, but both are acceptable in most use cases. And this is just a function that would also sanitize data and move out or take out some of those special characters. So now we've got a working function that is really a little bit longer than, than the first solution we looked at. But let's go ahead and try some of these things out. And the first thing we can do is go, okay, we're not working with the form. We don't know who's sending the data parameters and they're unpredictable. So we might not always get a first and a last. Let's see if this works. It says not set. So it caught that we did not get a last name parameter with the is set in the else executed and we got not set. So that's good. Now, if we submit just one name in our form, the form will still send both parameters, just one is empty. And now it says missing required data because we did not send the last name and it triggered this not empty in the nested if statement. And so everything is working as expected and this is just a separate solution from the previous one that I showed you and either does work. PHP applications send and receive data all the time. It's one of the main things about PHP, so understanding Git and Post is very important. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. There's much more to learn, and in the meantime, a couple of the videos on my left may help you on your coding journey. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time.